Hello and welcome back to the Skinny Code YouTube channel. So this is the first installment in the theory of data structure series. The first data structure that we'll be talking about today is called as a stack data structure. Before going into that, in this series we'll be just discussing about the abstract data types. That means what is abstraction? We'll be hiding all the implementation details and we'll leave that to a separate series of its own and we'll just provide the end user with the functionality of the data structure and what all the what are the attributes that the data structure will be storing. All right. So the first data structure that we are going to discuss today is called as a stack. Okay, the abstract data type of the stack. For example, uh, we can assume a stack as of now. Uh, first, we'll be dealing with only arrays, linear arrays kind of stack. Okay, so let us assume that this is the stack that we are having. And okay, since this is a linear array, we'll be having some positions to be filled over here. All right. And this is index zero, this is index one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Now, the first operation that can be performed on a stack is called a push operation. All right. And the push operation takes in one parameter and that can be just passed in to the stack like that. So if at all I'm calling push of five, that means I want to put five in the topmost uh, available position in the stack. And the topmost available position is zero because there is nothing under that. And we can, we can put it over there. And now let us assume that I'm calling push of three and now three comes over here because it can't go in the position of five. And you can't put it on over here because that is not the topmost position. We have uh, empty spaces. We'll be having empty spaces in here left. So we can't put it over here. All right. Cool. Now the second operation that we'll be talking about is called a pop operation. Now pop doesn't take in any parameters and it just g removes the topmost element that is available in the stack, all right? So the topmost element that is available is three and hence it'll just remove three from the stack, okay? Now we'll be remaining with five. So you can see that the this is the top end of the stack, all right, this is the top end and the pushing of elements into the stack and popping out of elements, both are happening from the same end, all right? So this is also known as a uh, LIFO data structure, LIFO, which means last in first out all right that is horrible to look okay so this is also known as a LIFO data structure because the last element that was pushed if you remember was three because of this operation that is the last element that is to be pushed and that is the first element that came out all right because that is the first element that came out when we call that pop operation so you can see that stack is nothing but is like a pile of books okay so assume this is book number one this is book number two and this is book number three. If you want to put another book in that pile of books, we'll have to put it on the topmost position, theoretically. And if you want to remove some book, we cannot just take it like this, all right? First, we'll have to take the topmost one and then this and then this, okay? And after taking that, if you, if at all you're storing the remaining uh, above two elements in another stack, we can just uh, put it them back over here. All right, so it's just like a pile of books. And if you want to remove, we'll have to do it from the top end. And if you want to push again, we'll have to do it from the top end. Now, programmatically, how do you think we'll be implementing this? Uh, since we are dealing with arrays as of now, the array implementation of a stack, uh, we'll take in a variable called a top variable, which is initially minus one and y minus one. For example, assume there is already an element called five in the stack and the position of that element will be zero. Hence, the topmost element's position is zero. That means if there is one element in the stack, the topmost element's uh, position will be zero. Then if there are no elements in the stack, then the topmost element's index should be minus one. So this is known as the base case or the, if the stack, this is how we check if the stack is empty, all right? So along with push and pop, we have another function to check if the stack is empty, is empty. And this returns if the top variable is equals to minus one, because minus one is the initial case. And if the top is equals to minus one, that means uh, there is no element in the stack. And if it is a Boolean false or uh, zero that is returning, if you don't have Booleans in the programming language that you're coding, then that means uh, the, the stack is not empty and there are some elements being pushed into the stack. All right, so this is, a uh, lookup function that will be uh, that will be coming in handy when you want to 
pop something out of the stack and if the stack is already empty you can't just pop out of it right hence you'll have to use that function now the next lookup function that we'll be having is isful and isful is nothing like nothing but uh, for example the maximum capacity of the stack the maximum capacity of the stack is six all right because five indices that means six positions can be filled in the stack and if at all all these numbers are filled let's assume three two one zero minus three okay so the tops index will be t equals to five right so t will be five and max will be six that means whenever the max value is equals to the top indices uh, plus one that means the stack is full and we cannot push any more elements into it because already the the topmost element of the stack is the maximum capacity of it all right so here the condition will be top equals to equals to or uh, top plus one equals to equals to max all right so that is another lookup function that comes in handy whenever you want to push something into the stack and you want to know if the the stack is already uh, full and if the maximum capacity is already reached so that you can raise an error from that hence at times i'll be returning a boolean from this operation because if i am returning a boolean false that means the stack is already full and i cannot push any elements into it and if i am returning a boolean one that means the passed in parameter which is five is being pushed into the stack and the operation was successful all right now you can see implementations of the pop functions in many different ways some people like to return whatever the uh, popped out element uh, to ba back to the user for example if you are calling pop right here that means uh, top will be going down and going down okay <laughs> that sounds bad okay so minus three will be coming out all right so minus three is being popped out and the return minus three but i don't quite like that uh, implementation very much i don't know why but uh, i just write another function to return if well we also are popping out of it okay so i like to have other lookup functions and other functions too so the next function that i'll be discussing is the fifth one which is poll so poll is nothing but pop operation but it just returns whatever is in the top position too pop operation returns a void okay so this returns a void and this returns an integer and by the way this doesn't need to be integers they can be characters strings and whatever it just uh, to be understanding it simply i'm just returning integers in here all right so it's just an extension of the pop function but it also returns whatever the uh, topmost element is after popping it out of the stack all right so that's it now we have another lookup function which is really important and that is known as the peep function peak just returns what is the topmost element okay it is also known as in some textbooks it is called it top function it just returns whatever whatever element is present in the top all right so it is zero as of now so this returns zero for us okay if at all uh, the topmost element is one this will be returning a one okay so peak does not remove anything from the stack it just returns the element that is present in the topmost position all right so these are the six most important functions that we'll be discussing in stack and i also have a search function which just passes a key into it and if it, it performs a linear check inside that stack if that uh, that key is present in the stack or not all right so that that doesn't uh, fit in the data structures part but i've seen many many textbooks and professors discussing that search operations right from stacks and queues and linked lists hence i've just included it in the code part but yeah you linear search is not anywhere related to stack or anything you can be implement that on any array or any linked list all right so let us discuss the time complexities of these operations all right because you can see every time uh, we're popping out of the stack we are decrementing the top variable and every time we are pushing something into the stack we are incrementing the top variable right for example the initially the value of top is minus 1 and the first time we pushed 5 into it it will become top equals to zero and again we pushed into it top equals to uh, one and again we pushed top equals to two again we pushed top equals to three all right now let us assume we called for a pop operation that means this should be taken out and t is again two all right from three hence while we are popping we'll decrement the top variable by one and well while we are pushing something into the stack we'll be incrementing the top variable by one okay so that is the logic we have in the variable called top okay now 
yeah so since uh, we know the top variable and uh, where every time in any operation that is being performed we surely know where the top variable will be over here hence the push operation it's just two steps right one is incrementing the top variable and putting that passed in element inside that top variables index all right so error is the stack array name t is the index and element is the pushed in element all right so it's just big of one because we are not writing any loops or we are not traversing anywhere over here and similarly with the pop pop just does t minus minus all right it just takes this from here to here it's just no traversal anywhere and his this is also big of one and so does the Paul operation because Paul is just an extension of the pop operation. Even that is big O of one. And so does the peak operation because peak is just a lookup function. Uh, it doesn't do anything. And so are the is empty and is full conditions too. So all of these functions are in the time complexity of big O of one. So you cannot use this data structure everywhere because just, just because it is having a big O of one data structure in all uh, time complex in, in all of its operation that doesn't mean that you'll have to use it in every uh, problem that you're facing all right so the stack data structure has its own set of applications okay so let me write that out applications so the first application that i can think of is the balanced parenthesis problem that you'll be seeing often for example in text editor now uh, you open a flower brace and then a block brace and the parentheses and so the all these will be stored in a stack all right so first the flower brace will be stored and then the this and then comes the parentheses and all of this and whenever we see the opposite of the exact opposite of that over here and here and like this then we'll be popping a dot of it okay so we'll pop this out and hence these both will be gone then we see this and hence we'll pop this out and these both will be gone and then for example we don't have this and then you can see that some element is remaining in the stack and we don't see an opposite of of it in the uh, in the code or whatever in the text editor hence this will raise an error because we we shouldn't at the end of the program we shouldn't have any thing left in that stack okay so here we'll be using the stack data structure to check if all the parentheses are being closed correctly whether the parentheses are balanced or not this is known as the balanced parentheses problem okay that is known as the balanced parenthesis problem now the second application that i can think of is the call stack all right for example we have a main function and the main function is having some sum function pun intended we have three comma five to the sum function so the definition will be somewhere on the top over the main function and hence uh, the first function that is being called is the main function and from that the execution goes to the sum function and for example the sum function does some complex operations though not required but assume that it does and some fn function is called now that that function implementation has been completed that will be popped out of the stack and it comes back to the execution of that sum function now that will be also completed that will be popped out of the stack and the main program the main function will be uh, execution will be the scope will be out of it and it will be popped out of the stack all right so this is known as the call stack so even here we'll be using uh, the stack data structure and we also use it in the creating of stack variables okay you must have heard of uh, stack variables and heap variables all right so if at all we are having a scope over here and int x equals to 5 and then int y equals to 6 that means all this will be stored in a stack oops all right the first it will be five and then comes six and now that the scope is being ended since it's a stack variable that will be popped out immediately okay so it the first the last element that entered will be six and that will be popped out and five will be popped out all right so that is the other application that i can think of which is the first one is balance parenthesis and this the second is memory and call stack all right in operating systems and the third most important uh, application that i can think of is the clipboard okay not a normal cut paste thing even that uses a stack i don't know precisely but in your google keyboard or whatever if you're having the clipboard that means you're having text one over here and then you're having text two over here you first 
cut this out of it and then without pasting that anywhere you're cutting this too you can see that uh, both of them are being stored inside a stack okay it'll be text one and here will be text two now whenever you open that clipboard app or you know uh, that uh, widget in your google keyboard or whatever you can see that in order text two will be appearing first and then text one or without even opening it if you do the paste thing t2 will be pasted instead of t1 because that is the last element that was pushed into the stack okay so even this feature in our computers that we see the clipboard feature will be using the stack data structure so i hope you understood the basics and the theory and the abstract data type of stacks so in the next video i think i'll be uploading the data structures using c the implementation of stack uh, video which will be having the statically allocated uh, stack memory allocated st stack implementation 